So let's begin this. Uh, can you see the screen with them? Yes, ma'am. So let's begin polymerization. The polymers. Polymerization is a process, and we are going to talk about the compounds. So that is the polymers. So here we are having the questions and uh, marks. How much given from this topic, polymer topic? You will receive five marks question. Okay, so mainly here we expect the question again, as I said in the previous chapter, it was no one mark, two marks, you will have directly in the part D question. Similarly, here this chapter also uh, has the part D ka fifth question you may have, right? D part, clear? So it means there's no, whatever, the one mark, two marker, they'll be keeping there itself, okay? Now let's begin, what are polymers? If I'm talking about the polymer, so you can see it is made up of word like two words. So it can, if I divide poly means many mer is a part. So it's basically a compound which contains many parts, right? Many parts in the sense, uh, parts I would connect it in a hydrocarbon form, correct? So polymers will be a long chain molecule, macromolecules basically, and they have high molecular weight as well. Right, so molecules, these, uh, what's the single unit they hold and see, we can say that is repeated unit all uh, get connected by covalent bond and they uh, form a long chain. So what is the single unit which gets connected right by itself or by other compound? So that is called as the monomer. Okay, single unit, which is present in here in polymer, right and uh, united in a large number we call that compound as a monomer single unit okay so single unit monomer if i have to define i will say this is a simple molecule which has which from or from which uh, the polymer is fo uh, formed right so uh, monomers if i'm talking about the polythene examples for example take a polymer example polythene so just to remove the poly word from here the monomer unit in this is ethene it's it's easy right so here in polythene when you get the polymer polythene that means ethene uh, in a large number it combines and forms a macromolecule so basically they are giant molecule or macromolecules what are they macromolecules first property we can see they are macromolecules right so these macromolecules they contain a single unit right they join by single unit what is the single unit called as monomer right so these monomers are responsible for forming polymers right so we can say uh, molecules what are the uh, monomer the molecules from which the polymer form. We can uh, mold in your uh, own sentence, like after thinking, after reading, after knowing the concept, we can uh, no, bring it in our own sentence. So molecular, so molecules, uh, these macromolecules, basically they are having a single unit that single unit is called the monomer. So if I have to define the monomer, I would say this is the simple molecules, right? Which, which are like uh, from which the morph polymers are formed. It is clear about the introduction about the polymers. Now let me take uh, the process name by which they are getting prepared. So that is called the polymerization or the phenomena by which we are preparing. So basically, this is the process of conversion, right, of monomers into polymers. Pradhyay, are you able to understand? Yes, ma'am. Correct. So this is the process, this is the phenomena where the polymerization have, uh, polymerization taking place and polymers are forming. Now, as I said, the definition ke liye, polymers are long chain molecules and ha have high molecular weight, correct? So we can say they are defined as the macromolecules. They are basically macromolecules. 
they contain a single unit the single unit is called monomer what is a monomer monomer we call the molecules from which the polymers are formed they follow a process the process name we call as a polymerization right the process of conversion of monomers into polymers we call it as a polymerization so now basically there are many polymers the problem is how to study so to make these studies simple and systematic we need to classify them how will you classify the way uh, we have a systematic classification like seeing their character seeing their structure seeing how do they are obtained so we have basically classified them like that so let us learn the classification of polymers okay this makes our study of polymers simple and systematic as well as easy okay so we can say classification of polymers made this is made based on seeing the source right and structure their structure and the type of polymerization means the mode of what they are opting which by which process they are undergoing and then seeing the molecular like interactions what interaction what kind of interaction constituents are held with so it depends on all these uh, we can say Uh, factors and then classification made for the polymers so under these we can cover all the types of the polymers understood so let's do the classification basically four major types we have four types so four major types may uh, i would say the first is <clears throat> based on source like i can say natural polymer synthetic polymer how do you obtain the source how do you get right so the based on source i would say uh, example like natural can you give one example natural polymer ka one example rubber yes ma'am right okay protein protein is a long chain isn't it peptide chain isn't it starch this is polysaccharide poly word has come polysaccharide starch cellulose right those are polysaccharides so these are natural polymers correct based on source we will talk in late, uh, like in detail about this because we have in syllabus this many to study and uh, that's all total four types are there so our four, whole chapter is based on these four okay so first based on source second what did i say we are going to learn based on structure right how are they made up of based on structure means they have a linear form or they are having a branch form because they are hydrocarbons right basically the hydrocarbon and its compound so they can go in a straight carbon chain they can come in a branch form so seeing the structure also we can classify polymers right then category goes like as i said the uh, uh, type of the mode of polymerization process correct the type or mode of polymerization are you clear yes based on type of polymerization and then we go at last based on molecular forces that i said in interaction molecular forces nothing that is intermolecular force of attraction i am talking to okay let me write that also right so these are the classification modes we have we are basically the source structure type of polymerization so first we will be talking about the source let us talk based on source the first topic i am picking up okay here let us go on first discussion we are going to talk about the polymers which are uh, coming from different sources okay so this classification is based on the source i would say there are two uh, three types synthetic and semi synthetic also consider under this so there are basically three types okay so three uh, types may we have uh, you know natural 
I would say the first will go natural and then it will go synthetic, correct? And then we go to semi-synthetic. Now, natural and synthetic can be understood. Now, what is semi-synthetic? This is little uh, strange word, right? So semi-synthetic may what happens, we take the compound, right? Suppose cellulose is taken, okay? And then we modify it by chemically, okay? By chemical process, right? So cellulose, when it is used for making uh, other uh, artificial uh, polymer, okay? So we call that compound as the synthetic polymer by using chemical technique. So that is semi-synthetic, -chem semi-synthetic. So I would say the examples I will discuss over here. Semi-synthetic means cellulose, say rayon repairs. Rayon, you know, rayon about rayon. Rayon is, what is rayon? Rayon is not crayon, rayon. Rayon is artificial cell. Today you will hear his voice. Today is no not having school, no school for him. So he'll be in around me, right? He will be hearing. Sorry for that. So this rayon is called, yeah, we'll go. You play. Artificial silk. It is called as artificial silk. Okay. So cellulose is taken and uh, cellulose is converted into silk by this is actually synthetic silk or artificial silk it is called so why the artificial word is added over here you know the process of the natural silk right this here we are taking the uh, cellulose and chemically it is converted into the silk right okay so we call this compound as the artificial silk the best example of the semi synthetic is the artificial silk rayon let us not talk over here the natural uh, polymers so basically what are the sources for this the source will be basically plants right and animals Raghu, go to back from baby mama is speaking please so you are not shouting click quietly Okay, you are a good boy, good. So plants and animals are the sources of the natural polymer. They give uh, basically the polymer, these compounds. So if I'm talking about the animals, like plant ke liye to it's okay, starch ho gaya, cellulose ho gaya. What about and rubber also? What about animals? So yeah, animal can see, we have in protein present everywhere, protein present in our hair, protein present in our muscles. So. Animal also contains, uh, you know, polymer, right? Poly compounds. That is poly, um, we can say. Yeah, you continue, play, please. So we can say that is the source, correct? So plants and animals, they are the source of the natural polymers, basically. So what are the examples? Go, we can uh, write over here, Hridaya. Can you help me? with the examples of the natural polymers. Examples are very important for one more question. So you have seen the source. Now let us go for the examples. So a starch, I would take first a starch, then Hridaya, protein. Hridaya, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then I would say uh, cellulose, correct? Then rubber, which is obtained from plant. So these are the natural uh, polymers, correct? So natural polymers may starch, proteins, cellulose, and the rubber. One more question in the fifth part, the fifth part will be having divisions, one, two, three questions. There you may have such question, write an example of an example of natural polymer, write an example of synthetic polymer, write an example of semi-synthetic polymer. Okay, such examples. Or the, you may uh, have a question like write a source of uh, no, natural polymers. So what are the sources we have plants? We obtain these polymers from plants and animals. Okay, yes. let's move on to the next topic. So after natural polymer, we would go for the next topic is synthetic polymers. So synthetic polymers may you can see uh, they are basically 
uh, what will be the source if i'm taking this stocking the source basically this is man made right uh, we are preparing it in industries so man made uh, compound polymer compounds we call as a uh, poly synthetic polymer so we know all the polymers like polythene poly uh, c polyacetate all c polyvinyl clo uh, chloride so such compounds are artificially made in the sense man made these polymers are so raghu up you you will go to drawing room please baby then i will not go to temple very good so nylon six six abuna as many compounds we have the structure of these compounds so i'm talking to these synthetic polymers under this so source is basically man made we talk it as because it the compound will be taken like organic compounds and this is not the compound where the uh, we are getting from the nature and then we are obtaining it's chemical right totally chemical chemical it's again processed by chemical process so we are saying it is man made polymer and example i would say polythene nylon correct so nylon may we have uh, 6 comma 6 okay buna s it has its name like whole composition is inside the name okay i'll help you how to remember then uh, yeah so on so these are the examples we say for the uh, as the synthetic polymer right now semi synthetic may as i have given you a uh, rayon that would be enough so semi synthetic polymers like they are basically derived from the uh, natural from the nature but uh, uh, chemical process chemical modification right so source will be their nature but they are later what they are doing chemical modification so cellulose on acetylation it gives it the cellulose diacetate so basically this is the compound which will be using in rayon thread formation so rayon can be taken as example best example okay so this is about the source now let's move on to the next uh, source uh, natural uh, we can say nature uh, from nature then we can have synthetic and semi synthetic now let us talk on the polymers which have a different structure and now we have we are going to arrange on that basis so let's talk the second one based on structure seeing a structure so what did i say uh, they may have a linear connection and that may have a called as a linear polymers so if the carbon like linear polymers ka matlab ki if i connect carbon in a straight carbon chain by single covalent bond right by single covalent bond a long carbon chain of single so we know the four sticks around the carbon atom so this is how if they get connected and they form a long chain a straight chain long chain so you can say that is the linear polymers correct the shape is linear polymer the first category goes over here as linear polymers it is clear so yes, how are they connected how are they forming the structure how they look like if they look long and straight carbon chain compound means a strong and uh, sorry long and uh, straight uh, chain can be carbon can be its compound like chloride also can be there vinyl chloride as the pvc i have said so that can be given as the example okay so we can say over here example goes pvc you know pvc is a polyvinyl chloride polyvinyl chloride okay this is the compound so uh, let me tell here i have drawn the straight carbon chain right so the polymerization when they go for they will be like this is this clear adhya yes ma'am you can see their uh, alignment in the same direction the curves are uni direction or all, all are can you see pradya yes ma'am so this is this thing uh, like carbon chain connected and it, they form a long carbon chain so they are not having a uh, two or three carbon chain a huge carbon molecule and its compound combining 
by covalent bond and forming a chain. So here second, we go for the branch form, branched chain. These all uh, the linear and branched, or we have already, we have learned in the basic organic chemistry. So branch chain uh, may, we can have like a, how trees are having branch. Suppose if you have a straight carbon and side may, we get the methyl. So we call that as a branch, right? Suppose here some group attached, here some group attached. So what do you call this chain as the branch chain? Similarly here in this structure, in the middle or somewhere, we will see the compounds are getting connected with the other chain. Okay, so we can call it as the branch chain polymers. So looking their structure, we, ha we have classified these polymers into branch chain, linear polymers. So how do they look like? Like I will say uh, linear chain having some branches, I would say. So that would be easy. So suppose I have taken a two linear chain, okay? And a little gap between them so that they can go for the... Can you see who they are? Yes, ma'am. So their structure is like this, okay? So you can see here, they consist of two linear chain connected by a hydrocarbon or connected by a chain, we can say it's a branch form. So basically low density polythene, LDPE, which is called low density polythene. They come under this category, LDPE. Low density polythene. Now the third type is the cross linked, which is also known as sometimes for one mark question in the fifth category, they ask uh, which polymer, uh, which type of polymer or name the uh, type, another type which called as the like network polymer. Network polymers, it's a quite a strange name, na? cross, cross, uh, cross, or cross link, cross linked, uh, branch chain, such names we have heard, but we never heard about the network polymers. So, what is that? Cross linked polymers, cross linked polymers, may I can, I will draw the diagram and then I will uh, tell how it will be a network. Look at over here. If I take um, a linear right here, then again the linear goes in this way and again linear starts over here. Fine. So suppose this connected to this chain, correct? This connected to this chain, this connected to this chain and this connected to this. So what we are observing over here, like all the three lines are in contact. Can you see? Yes, ma'am. The first two lines are connected. I right? Yes. I agree that. Uh, and similarly, you can see this. these two lines are connected. Means second and third ke beech mein connection. Hai. Then again, the yes, first and two has the connection. Correct. So this is me. This means we how, how the chain you are having. All the chains somewhere are they are getting connected. So they form a network like a structure three-dimensional network. So how do they look like three-dimensional after connecting? They look like a 3D network structure. That's why this is called as the another by another name, network polymers. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is about this, um, uh, what do you say? We have learned about the types. Okay, seeing the structure, let me talk the structure, this example. If I say bakelite, melamine, all they have this huge network structure, bakelite. So when you study the structure, uh, I automatically you can remember the all category, all examples in uh, these categories. You can see here the amine group is present. That means you have the amine functional group, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I hope you have understood. Uh, example me, we can see this. Okay, so this is the uh, seeing structure we have classified. Now let's see the type of polymerization and how do we classify them. 
so polymers now third category goes based on type of polymerization so we have two ways of the polymerization the first mode or the method technique what how do we prepare the polymers that is by addition polymers it's name as addition polymers so you know the substitution uh, sorry there are substitution addition reaction condensation reaction so same name over here addition reaction may basically what happens we are observing the double bond goes into the single bond means unsaturated hydrocarbons goes to saturated correct so such types of the examples like such types of the chemical reaction mechanism you will observe over here so addition reaction uh, say polymer will be created that type will be called as addition polymers okay second process the mode of process we are opting is the condensation so condensation uh, we know uh, we get the vapor and then we lower the temperature and we convert it into liquid form right so what happens basically the difference between their you know boiling point which two liquids they have can be getting separated by this technique so basically when we do the condensation obviously the simpler molecules either the water molecule or the alcohol molecule such molecules will be leaving out the uh, compound right so by products we can uh, assume as the whether it will be water or can be a uh, alcohol or ether such molecules getting separated by this technique so condensation polymers are that am i clear yes ma'am so addition polymers may we are basically doing a, a repeated addition of the monomer molecules and uh, those who are containing multiple bonds double or triple okay so for them they we will be doing the repeated addition and then they undergo for by this process and they form addition polymer are you clear so what are the example taken over here like polythene buna as buna and all such examples for the addition theek okay? hai so polythene which you can remember right many are there but the simple one can be remembered right which frequently we use so polythene then pvc also can be taken buna as buna and can be the two are okay more i if i keep you will get confused so uh, let us talk on the condensation condensation may basically what happens we get this one simpler molecule out like a water alcohol such simple molecules lost we observe in the condensation so here example goes nylon nylon can be taken as example okay nylon 6 6 can be example see two types are there nylon 6 we have and nylon double 6 we also we have but writing the double 6 we have a way 6 comma 6 right rudina then terylene all such example so let the styron 6 6 and double 6 can be so we can remember it okay easy way to remember this right here there yes ma'am okay so addition polymers will talk in detail about this addition and condensation we have in our syllabus as i said the whole chapter is in around we are seeking we are seeing the four topics uh, based on the source then based on the structure based on the polymerization mode of the polymerization so whole four topic and the interaction what is present between them the whole chapter is based on these four topics okay so we are done with this type and then fourth is goes with the interaction what type of interaction they hold uh, interaction present between the polymers so we can say they can be you know four types so in this we can have the type of bond basically what type of bond existing between them interaction ka matlab the type of bond so we can say the one is the elastomer the another can be a fiber then can be thermoplastic thermosetting plastic you might have heard that the symbol and the written over there in the plastic if you turn the back side it will be written right so thermosetting and thermoplastic you have difference also between these two plastics you have to write so definitely the temperature vary over here thermo means temperature heat so let us talk on the fourth topic what is the fourth topic polymers we are going to learn based on
type of bond or interaction okay or we can say uh, other way we what we can say based on molecular forces i have written this line only now molecular forces okay or interaction interaction between them what is present uh, the bond so let's uh, what four types basically are these what are the four types elastomers then it can be a fiber so we can say the fibers right so fibers when taken like a thread okay like a uh, rope then we can say thermoplastic and then we go for thermo setting thermo thermo setting so elastomers and fibers thermoplastic thermo setting these all come under the category where the have the type of bonds now let's see the type of bond present between them elastomers how are they linked they linked with the weak okay intermolecular forces okay so uh, i would say the rubber natural rubber example for the elastomer natural rubber theek hai even vulcanized rubber vulcanized rubber means treatment with the sulfur if we do that will become vulcanized vulcanization is the process we can making the rubber very, uh, very uh, strength right giving strength to the rubber so that is called vulcanized rubber okay buna as buna and neoprene all these examples so i will write vulcanized rubber also so rubber as i have given natural rubber let me say vulcanized rubber example for this as i said the buna s and buna n these example also can be taken let me highlight all these okay so what basically uh, Uh, no uh, interaction they have they have the weak interaction and these weak intermolecular forces make them a very very elastic correct we can uh, you know uh, it will be very uh, you know flexible or rubber rubber you know rubber nature and you can assume the characteristics so why are they uh, having this elasticity because they have they are their constituents are held with the weak intermolecular forces of attraction okay next to fibers how are they uh, made and what property they may have so look at over here basically uh, when we are talking about the uh, fiber thread right so we we know these compounds are may uh, used for making ropes definitely so ropes if i prepare we prepare so definitely they may have a good strength right so and that strength leads when they have a strong intermolecular forces so what type of bond present between them strong inter molecular forces so they are you able to understand yes ma'am yeah they contain a strong inter molecular forces so what are the example for the fibers you must be knowing it is a very common like nylon nylon used in making thread right so nylon 6 comma 6 okay terylene also this is the uh, terylene is actually uh, polyester so nylon is used to prepare thread right so this is taken as example now let us go for the thermoplastic and thermosetting thermoplastic and what is the difference between the uh, these types of the uh, polymers basically they uh, we can say the first structure if you see they are cross linked right between the chain so you have seen the cross linked network structure correct so when these polymers are heated right they become soft and when they are cooled they become hard that is the most important property in the thermoplastic so in these polymers the intermolecular forces are intermediate between the those elastomers and fibers like where the intermolecular will be uh, standing so i would say if uh, the intermolecular force of uh, elastomer is this 
right elastomer ka what is the force is the weak force right Inter intermolecular force and we have fibers ke liye strong intermolecular force of attraction so where uh, will this belong or where does it belong or where does it uh, set so i will say it will be in the middle right in the intermediate intermediate of the elastomers and the fibers at that means not very weak and neither very weak nor very strong okay so we can say the uh, thermoplastic intermolecular forces are lies or intermediate between those of elastomers and the fibers that is called the thermoplastic and what special character they have when you heat these type of plastics they become very uh, soft and when you just cool it like bringing lower temperature it becomes hard so that is the most important characteristic seen in the thermoplastic thermosetting and one more thing they are remoldable right we know this can be remold then if they get uh, like they if they change their uh, status while changing the temperature so they can be remoldable they will be remoldable okay whereas in thermosetting plastic let me talk uh, first heat uh, how it changes so they become hard and infusible on heating and cannot be softened again so we can say they cannot be remold right they are not remoldable we cannot remold them are you clear so such characteristics present in thermosetting thermosetting means temperature is fixed for that right we cannot change the temperature we cannot make the plastic in different phase by changing the temperature because temperature is fixed for this type of plastics that is called the thermosetting plastic are you clear so they become hard and infusible on heating if you heat try to heat they become hard and they cannot be brought back or cannot be softened okay because that they not they cannot bear the temperature are you clear they have changed the phase is this clear difference so we say yeah yes yes we'll ma'am write, we'll write the difference we'll write the different in a keyword so it will help us to you know thermo setting and thermo plastic difference we have tried to mask a difference it is very very important so the diff actually this chapter uh, you will have a differences like addition polymerization condensation polymerization mechanism of addition polymerization and the condensation so these the long questions expected from this chapter and the fix either you will have a condensation or you will have a addition mechanism sure every year they ask so if you prepare this like a five like three five marks means three marks will be prepared from the mechanism side and then rest two marks you can you can expect either definition example anything can be asked okay like this we can keep our like after teaching the organic chemistry i'll tell you how to uh, like prepare the which topic you can focus more to score marks are you getting yes ma'am so uh, thermoplastic uh, i told uh, where the intermolecular is present intermolecular force of attraction between or uh, the, these are the inter, their intermolecular forces are intermediate of the elastomers and the fibers and the thermo setting i did not discuss with you uh, the interaction basically they cross linked correct they are also cr cross linked uh, but they go for permanent change upon uh, on heating if you heat the compound they will be changed completely they are also having the network uh, uh, kind of a structure and the interaction between them but they will go for permanent change on heating that is their problem so let us see the difference between i will write the heading over here difference between thermoplastic and we'll see the example under this okay thermo setting so the first we go with the thermoplastic then thermo setting so thermoplastics i said the uh, intermolecular forces
will be intermediate between elastomers and fibers. Okay. Is this clear? How are they made up of? Tell me. By cross link. Clear? It is, the, it is yeah. clear? Okay. So you can make your sentence. As I said, only I will write the point. Cross link ka matlab, they, these are made up of by this or the link what type of interaction if you observe, they have the network structure. Okay. Now, most important characteristic, what happens to this on heating? Tell me, soften, becomes softened. And what happens on cooling? Tell me, it becomes harder. So this is the characteristic, very important. We need to pay attention. This is a major difference, I would say, between the thermoplastic and the thermo setting. Okay. The next example goes. So example ke liye, I will take the polythene. You can do the experiment at home also. Polythene, polystyrene, Teflon, PVC, all those can be taken example. Polystyrene. So end of the chapter, you will be now aware with these examples because you have each and every compound ka composition and how they are prepared, okay? PVC is called the polyvinyl. Teflon, you must be knowing it's a coating of non-stick uh, cookware, correct? That's the reason they say you should not cook the food in, uh, no, in uh, this non-stick cookware at high temperature. When it is... Uh, uh, damaged or the coating is not present over there. So that is the reason. Even a non-stick cookware should not be kept at high temperature. That is for our safety purpose. It's very, very harmful. So now this is about your thermoplastic. Do you have any doubt understanding this? No, no right? Now let us go for the thermo setting now. Thermosetting polymers are also having the same cross uh, link molecules. They are also made up of that, but they undergo permanent change. So we can say they undergo permanent change on heating. Okay. And what they become if you heat on heating tell me they do not see infusible they will become hard and infusible right they on heating they become hard and infusible right and they their most important is cannot be softened again this is a major difference between thermoplastic and thermosetting. So example, what we can take? Vicalite. Okay. Then I would say urea, formaldehyde as a polymer, but keep only Vicalite. It's a simple one. Is this clear? So they are also having the cross link they but the difference what we are observing is they are undergoing the permanent change they become hard on heating infusible and cannot be brought to again the soft and form right so what is the example for it bacalite clear it is clear yes yes okay. The last category we will go for uh, the type of polymerization. And as I said, here you can just pay attention because the three marks question share from this topic, the types of the polymerization we are going to learn in detail. So we have completed our four modes. I can say the four uh, bases for uh, uh, way of classification. And now we are going to learn the mechanism. So in for mechanism, I will pick the topic 
the topic which we third topic we have done na third topic was based on mode of polymerization right so this is the basically technique of polymerization how are they prepared plastic polythene how are they getting prepared ways what method so two ways we have learned one is the addition polymerization second is the condensation polymerization so there are basically two types so let's see this topic we have as for three marks types of polymerization reaction so we have two types basically the first type goes as the addition we are now you are aware about this addition polymerization and the second type we take as condensation so addition polymerization if we are talking we have uh, the mechanism for this let's begin this what is addition polymerization we'll learn and then we'll go for the mechanism so uh, you might have heard about the free radical mechanism in the 11th standard you might have learned the mechanism completely free radical free radical mein you might have learned the alkene undergo the substitution reaction there it gives the uh, free radical mechanism right ch4 reacts with chlorine and gives methyl chloride the four is steps are involved where we get the final as the carbon tetrachloride so it happens like due to the formation of free radical it's a natural process it happens in the presence of diffused sunlight chlorine gets uh, you know substituted with the hydrocarbon and since there are four hydrogen in methane all the four will be getting substituted by the cl so we get the finally as the ccl4 same rule will be applicable over here first generation of uh, or the create we are creating free radical and then the free radical will attack on multiple bonds compound so suppose if you are preparing polythene so what is the monomer taken in the polythene ethene so ethene unit will be taken and basically in the presence of catalyst we perform so base catalyst will have uh, or will undergo the reaction uh, basically and it will just enhance the reaction that's all it is not coming out in the product or participating in the reaction you would see in the last okay so basically we do like that uh, so here that initiate the chemical reaction and that it moves out so here we go first in detail what is addition polymerization and then the mechanism will start okay so addition polymerization if we are talking that is this is also known as chain growth polymerization so by uh, like this name also uh, you may have a question the addition is also called as chain growth why this is called the chain growth because step by step like we can see the linking of the hydrocarbons and um, forming a chain long chain so basically uh, we can see here uh, multiple bonds getting into the single covalent bond saturated hydrocarbons so as i said they are undergoing the addition reaction addition reaction is that means uh, multiple goes to the single bond conversion or unsaturated goes to the saturated hydrocarbons so you will see here the chain growth right and that is the reason we have given this name as the chain growth polymerization you can write s or z anything you can write no worry so the polymerization where we can see the large number of same right or different you it can be a same or it can be a different monomers right so what is the reactant taken over here large number of same or different monomers monomers theek hai which will be containing condition i am writing multiple bonds that is needed because undergoing the addition single bond does not go addition reaction that gives substitution reaction so this is important containing one or more double bonds is clear so that will be adding together
and what do they give a polymer this is only we are going to do so this whole process what do you call as addition polymerization okay and let me write it follows one mechanism what is that mechanism called as free i have uh, given the clue free radical mechanism now this is little uh, if you haven't revised na so again it will be difficult but no worry we will do this as i said this mechanism free radical mechanism mein no ion here will be the free radical formation free radical ka matlab ki suppose if you have two bond shared between x and y theek hai so these x and y when they wanted to get separate right if you want to separate them what do they do they go away with their electron that's all this is how the separation happens okay there is no charge formation did you understand so if i have to write the x free radical i will say x with the single dot what do you call this as x atom with the free radical it is clear to you yes ma'am okay we'll go for break after doing this no worry okay so let's finish this mechanism then we'll go for a break so here we can say there are three steps mechanism i'm going to start this mechanism follows three steps very uh, simple the first initiation then goes to the uh, propagation and then terminate the uh, chain okay and forms the final product so here let me tell you what is the reactant taken as the reactant condition is taken you can go for same or different type of monomer right you have but check there must be sing, uh, double covalent bond either one or two double covalent bond no worry but they must contain double covalent bond so here what we are taking as the reactant let us know about uh, let's it's very important for us so let us know about it we will be taking ethene as the reactant okay and i am preparing polythene under polymerization okay this addition polymerization so my product would be polythene and for polythene i have chosen the monomer as ethene okay and here the little quantity of peroxide will be taken okay so this will initiate the reaction that's why that's all okay so peroxide and then uh, peroxide will go out peroxide will not be staying with that peroxide will be going out and uh, we'll see the product what product getting produced over here okay so uh, here we are taking polythene and benzo oil peroxide so i'll teach what is benzo oil peroxide this is quite strange for you peroxide uh, let us learn in a separate peroxide ka matlab ki oxygen single bond oxygen this is called the peroxide theek hai so when you take two benzoyl benzoyl means benzene contains the carbon double bond oxygen right when we are taken this connected with the other oxygen okay but, so, but this bond will not be connected right one thing you know you must know so how do we get the connection done very simple benzene c double bond o we keep up because oxygen ka maximum two sticks we can have right no, not more than that so carbon ke sath peroxide bond will be connected and other side again the carbon atom right benzene can be attached are you clear yes, so like this the structure goes just a minute i need to bring it little closer so i can go with this drawing here itself it would be fine now you can understand so if i write this benzoyl peroxide in a molecular formula will look quite easy for you co okay and this i am going to keep in a bracket okay hold twice is that fine for you or if you want i can make it o right o peroxide and c6 co c6 h5 this also we can write okay so whichever way you wanted to understand what is benzoyl peroxide so benzoyl peroxide basically this is the benzoyl peroxide so i'll be taking this compound 
benzoyl peroxide and treating it with the ethene okay ethene is the monomer unit so first i would say the first step chain initiation chain initiation step in this the reaction get initiated by formation of free radical so benzoyl peroxide will be exposed in sunlight benzoyl peroxide is exposed in diffused sunlight needed for it okay so it is exposed in light or you can uh, write sunlight or light the better i will write light otherwise you have a doubt always reaction should be in a open no it is a natural process okay so basically when uh, when we do addition polymerization there we need light if we are doing in industries okay so this happens in the presence of light you know uv light can be artificially also generated you know about it right yes it depends on the filament na so yeah so you have benzoyl peroxide uh, which is exposed in light so after exposing in sunlight what happens to the benzoyl peroxide peroxide bond will cleave okay so let me write the benzoyl c6h5 c double bond o and this is the peroxide bond so where we are going to attack at this point c6h5 why because this is our peroxide bond right what is the name of the compound benzoyl peroxide it is clear this initiated when initiated when this compound is kept in sunlight so they are getting separated as i said when the bond gets separated they they take their own electron and they go away so what do you say that the fragment you can imagine this goes separate this side and this goes this side means two moles of the equal volume we can get so can we write the benzoyl uh, free radical benzyl free radical c6h5 c double bond o and o and it's one electron right free radical got it now once the free radical generated it will let the other atom to form the free radical that is the problem so now the this group whole group bond will be cleaved okay because free radical has generated so this bond cleaves the bond present between carbon and carbon c6h5 and c double bond o that cleaves now here the cleavage uh, takes place here the cleavage takes place when here the cleavage takes place after the cleavage of this we get the production of benzyl benzyl free radical so carbon ke upar we have to write the free radical got it the free radical generated over carbon and the carbon dioxide gets free co2 gets free because this free radical free radical gets one more electron so two electrons formed so they gets neutralized and that forms as the carbon dioxide this is called the phenyl free radical and this will be now used okay so now the phenyl free radical here itself in this initiation step itself ethene ke sath it will react so do you know the ethene right so this bond one bond from this it is let me highlight this bond this one bond under cleavage so when one bond cleaves one side okay let me say one side carbon will be generated as the free radical that goes along with the c6h5 and that gets c6h5 ch2 single bond here we get the ch2 so completely we can see the red zone only under the problem you can see and that's why i have highlighted this bond will be remain as it is that's why i kept here got it so i if i mark little uh, here it will be fine to you right are you understanding and this yes, electron it is gone and get neutralized making these whole part neutral so there this is going at the c6h5 ch2 right dot ch2 chain propagation step 2 
what happens in chain propagation we take this compound now c6h5 ch2 single bond ch2 is taken again treated with the as i have taught you repeated addition repeated addition again the molecule will be taken and the same let me highlight this electron will be cleaved okay bond i meant to say will be cleaved and here it is a cleavage this bond re remains the same there itself so the product forms over here as c6h5 single bond ch2 single bond ch2 single bond ch2 right and the last as the free radical got it so you are able to see how the long chain is getting propagated correct so this can be written as in a shortcut also what can be done like if you can say the repeated addition like ch2 double bond ch2 again at attacks n numbers so what happens so we get over here c65 and this is our repeated in unit okay ch2 this is getting repeated so what do you mean by this this is part where n bond coming number of methyl coming getting attached and this remains the ch2 ch2 as the free radical got it a long chain forms after this needed to terminate the chain the step third is called as chain termination what do you call this as chain termination okay in this stage now chain getting terminated we will be taking multiple number of uh, you know this uh, group will be formed during the propagation so let us take two and uh, explain how will ha it happen so c6 c6h5 ch2 single bond cc the writing pattern yahan se hum cross karke we will make the small bracket so that indicates that there is a cleavage lots of n number cleavage sorry uh, uh, we can say addition of the methyl uh, ethylene group is continued okay this represents this symbol represents that then here we can have the ch2 single bond ch2 as i said i am taking this two units there are multiple numbers form yeah. only two units we are taking and explaining how the reaction happens so we are going to terminate the chain and when terminated chain the product forms over here as ch2 single bond ch2 simple we they get connected these two chain yahan se this and this bond will be formed so we are bringing ch c6h5 terminal sites okay ch2 single bond ch2 yahan se isko layenge ulta kar denge ch2 you can see now the attached part is this so we can say after ch2 the whole this part is this i am meant to say okay and the chain goes in opposite direction now ch2 and this holds the ch2 single bond ch2 and c6h5 are you clear this is our product that's all terminated chain is terminated product is formed do you see peroxide anywhere no right it just initiated the reaction at move out did you understand yes ma'am so this is overall your addition polymerization free radical mechanism followed the first initiation then propagation and then termination that's all the free radical it's very simple as i said if two atoms are held by covalent by sharing their electrons when they go out when they get separated what happens they move out with their own electron that's all there is here in free radical we don't get ch uh, charge like plus and the minus generally electron displacement leads to the charge separation charge formation we don't get over here we get the dot electron over there got it and similarly it get neutralized when the other sides a bond cleaves and electron shift over here so that means single single bond one single bond uh, with the two pair of uh, two uh, electrons the formation happens okay for the you are able to see the screen with it 
Yes, you can see the screen, right? Okay. Let's begin then. So we are done with the addition polymerization. We'll see some compounds of the addition polymers, which are, right? You have just like a, a polythene and all. We'll see that. And uh, basically, we will be dividing this in basically addition polymerization, two types under this. The first is the homopolymerization. As it say, I said, the same addition, ke liye, I have written on top. I'll just connect the previous information which I have delivered. Let me show over here. I wrote same or different. Theek hai? Large number of same or different monomers. So the same thing I'm going to explain in a detail over here. When addition polymerization, right, unit, single unit is homo, means same type. Homo means same. So when addition polymerization done for such group, then we call the process as the homopolymerization. And that polymer will be homopolymer. Are you clear? Yes, ma'am. So this, in this, I will say uh, same monomer unit. That's the reason we call it as a process name as the homopolymerization. Correct. So in addition polymerization, when the monomer unit polymer contains the large number of same number of um, monomer unit will be called as homopolymerization, the process. What will be the example then over here? Polythene. Right? So can we see some homopolymers examples and their preparation? How do we do? Did you understand, Rudhya? Hridhya, did you understand? Hridhya, can no. I hear from you? Okay. So let's see some examples and uh, their preparation. How do we prepare? Okay. So polythene as example I have given. I'm giving you all the some important homopolymers over here. So let's go in a detail. The first polyethene, I would that is divide into two subcategory, LDP and HDPE. What is LDPE? Low density polythene. And what is HDPE? High density polythene. Polythene, I will divide into two parts. Okay. So polyethene, basically two types. The first example, we have two types. The first category goes LDPE, low. density polyethene. Example, here we go with the low density polyethene. Like we can say uh, the polyethene, which is uh, like prepared at the low density and where will be used uh, this we can say for the electric wire, uh, in, as an insulator, we use bottles, a squeezing bottle, which is very soft, a squeezing bottle, dryers, flexible pipes, all these, the properties we can see over here. Let's see the preparation and then properties of LDP, low density polythene we will see. So how do we prepare? We take the ethene, here the same number of molecule taken, so ethene will be taken, N number, and this will be at high temperature and high pressure, so pressure somewhere 1500 to 2000 atmospheric pressure ATM and temperature 350 to 700, uh, sorry, 570 uh, Kelvin temperature will be taken. Oxygen uh, at oxygen, and this is a actually free radical initiator that is required because uh, this undergo the mechanism free radical initiator. Okay, so the reaction takes place over here and we get as the polythene. So connection, you can see again, we are connecting CH2 single bond, CH2, and further this gets, so this line indicates we have further 
continuity of CH2, CH2, CH2 group. Okay. Uses of low density, where do we use? What is the uses? We use as the insulator. Right? We use as the as insulator. Where do we use as insulator? For electrical wire. Right. Second, we have uh, squeeze bottles. They're basically sauce bottles and toys. Right. And what we can say is uh, uh, flexible pipes and flexible pipes. All these uh, places we can make use of this polythene. So these polythene's properties I forgot to discuss with you. They are basically uh, having very soft and flexible. That's the reason the uses of these are in these category. You can see squeeze bottles, toys, and flexible pipes because they are uh, unreactive. And the second part is they are very flexible in nature. Okay. And the, one more thing, they are not uh, conductor. They are poor conductor. That is why we are using as the insulator. So can I write down the properties in a word? I forgot to discuss with you. Hrudya, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so word-wise, I will just a simple word. It is inert. Inert ka matlab ki it is unreactive. Inert it would be? Right? And we can say it will be a tough liking. It's flexible. Tough doesn't ma mean that it is very hard. Tough, but flexible. Okay, and uh, that is the reason we are using. And second, uh, what did I say? Poor conductor of electricity. Let's talk the second HDPE. Here I have used A, right? So here B will be HDP, high density polythene. What is HDPE actually? It is also, we can say, uh, prepared by the same technique, same uh, unit will be taken, but uh, addition for under the elif addition polymerization, but here we use a, a solvent in the presence of that solvent, it will be used and uh, the catalyst is important. So addition polymerization process, addition in under that ethene hydrocarbon solvent in the presence, that will be taken, but Jiggler Nata catalyst name, name of the catalyst is very important for the uh, HDPE, high density polyethene. So the process goes over here, N number of the ethene is taken, same process addition, but we are changing the condition over here. Temperature we are uh, keeping little low, pressure also we will keep little low and uh, oh, 300, uh, 343. Yeah, Kelvin. So six to seven atmosphere peripheric pressure. And here, as I said, the catalyst is important. What is the catalyst? Ziegler. Ziegler Nata catalyst. So what is the Jiggler Nata catalyst? TiCl4 plus AlC2H5 whole thrice. Let me call by chemical name. How do you call this compound? Titanium tetrachloride. What do you call this as? Ti for titanium. Titanium four means tetra. Tetra chloride. And what is this compound called as? Triethyl aluminium. Triethyl aluminium. It is clear? Thirdia, it yes, is clear? Okay. So yes, this, this is basically very important. It's a huge catalyst, actually. Catalyst is only important over here. 
due to this catalyst to low temperature, the condition now you can see HTP is prepared. So this is, you do remember the name, composition, everything, the name of the catalyst. We get over here as CH2 single bond and number, right? So this product polythene, we will call as the high density polythene, HDPE. It is clear with you? Now the properties I'll talk and the users can be connected from the properties. So basically they are high density. The first property they have high density, right? Second property, what we can say, they are also inert. They do not react, okay? They are tough, but hard. Tough, they are also tough and hard. That was flexible nature, right? And where the users, what we, what type of uh, product uh, we can be used to product produce, like basket, bucket, dustbin, these all made up of bottles, pipe. So let me write basket, bucket, write pipes and uh, bottles. So not a squeeze bottle, the bottle which we use for drinking, right? Purpose plastic bottle, that is. Okay, it is clear? Hidya, it is clear? Can we revise now quickly? Or Hidya, one more example, two more we left with the uh, addition polymerize. We'll finish addition completely and then copolymer next class will start. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so two more compounds are left, the Teflon and the acrylonitrile that is called PAN. So let us learn about that compound. So we are done with the polythene, the two types, HDP, LDPE. And let's talk the Teflon, which also follows the addition polymerization only. So what is Teflon? Basically, Teflon is tetrafluoroethene, right? So this undergo with the free radical or persulfate catalyst at high pressure and it forms the Teflon. So polytetrafluoroethylene is called Teflon. Okay, for that, the monomer unit is taken tetrafluoroethylene. Ethene only, but four hydrogen we are not having over here. Instead of that, we have fluorine atom. So you call it as the tetrafluoro. Ethylene, the common name of ethene is ethylene, okay? So it is taken under high pressure. If you don't remember the pressure, you can keep high pressure, okay? And the peroxide catalyst is used over here. So basically you are seeing everywhere we have used catalyst na, to initiate the reaction. Here the catalyst is different, Jiggler nata. That is why this is HDP. Even the high density means temperature and pressure we have kept low. That is also the important point which have to be noted. Then the product we get as over here, FF, right? And uh, F over here, up and down. N numbers we get, what do you call this as the poly? Uh, tetra poly tetra fluoro okay ethylene so what do you call this as teflon sorry okay so what is the use of teflon it is used in making oil seals and gasket Then non-stick. Clear, Hridhya? The last compound, acrylonitrile, uh, polyacrylonitrile. That is called the shortcut pan. What is the complete name? This is the fourth compound which follows the addition polymerization, polyacrylonitrile. You know, nitrile is the C triple bond nitrosin, the same bond present over here. 
So we take H, H present over here. H over here, this will be taken in N number. This is also in N number. So we get over here product. Here only the acrylonitrile C triple bond N will be present. So this is called as acrylonitrile. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Peroxide catalyst again to initiate the reaction follows the addition polymerization process and forms a compound. H and H up and down. C triple bond N, okay, H down. And this is getting repeated N times. So what do you call this compound as? Polyacrylonitrite. So as I said at the end of the uh, chapter, you will be aware about the every compounds. I think, I hope you are now knowing what is Teflon, what is polyacrylonitrile. So polyacrylonitrile undergo the addition polymerization and the monomer unit what we use is the acrylonitrile. It is done again, the same uh, peroxide initiate the reaction. So peroxide is the catalyst and we get as the product polyacrylonitrile. So Hrudya, if I stop, uh, we are completed uh, almost uh, the major part of the polymer chapter. Okay, the copolymerization is left. Copolymerization is not very big. Yeah, examples are very much here under it, but it's a simple, okay? So every year actually alternate uh, topic, like either you will get the addition or you get the copolymerization. And there are examples for three ma uh, two marks, okay? So can we have the class tomorrow or tomorrow you are on leave? Um, um, tomorrow, if we have class, can we uh, only revise uh, the practicals? Uh, I For that, I need your uh, practical syllabus, which you have done in your class. Can yes, you send me? Uh, you do. forgot, I think, today. So you send me then tomorrow that I can teach you. Okay. The same time you will have the class or any other time you want. Um, um, this time is fine. Okay, fine. Then see you tomorrow, Hrithya. Okay.